So we started watching Motherland, Fort Salem, and I, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it. I, I like some of the things that they're doing, some of the mysteries that they're setting up, what have you. It, it, it desperately needs more world building, but when don't I say that about a sci-fi or a fantasy show, really? Well, eh, unless it's Star Trek Picard that had too much world building and not enough story, which is rare. So, yeah, we're not ready to talk about whether or not we like it or not. I am enjoying it, so I'm going to keep watching. But there are a lot of questions about gender and sexuality brought up by this show that this show, I don't think, realizes it's doing. Or if it does, it's not doing a good job of them. So I would like to talk to you today about heteronormativity and queerness in Motherland, Fort Salem, on today's episode of Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name's Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset. And yeah, I'm using big words today like heteronormativity. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just too focused on these things, but this show, man, there's so much about it that I want to like. I like the characters. I, I've really actually enjoyed some of the cinema photography of the show. Um, the Beltane episode was so beautifully lit that everybody has this wonderfully ethereal glow around them that I'm pretty sure was actually captured practically with good lighting. So that's amazing. But yeah, okay, so I'm probably, I don't think I'm going to be giving away any spoilers in this discussion. And there's one thing that might be a spoiler, and if I do talk about it, I will warn you before we get there. This is more of a roadblock episode, because <laughs> I am enjoying the show. Now, I have to say the fact that I think three or four out of the th out of the four, I think, episodes that we've seen have had to include a um, card for the suicide prevention hotline says something about this show and uh, I I am uh, that that's something I'm gonna have to talk about when we actually talk about the show itself. But I feel like I should give you a warning in case you do decide to check it out. The first episode actually begins with a mass suicide. So if that's something that you can't watch, just be mindful of that. So Motherland Fort Salem takes place in an alternative history version of America where the Salem witch trials went slightly differently than you would expect. And the witches basically swore allegiance to the colony and then later to the United States. So witches are real. They have been with us since Salem. And they comprise the backbone of not only our military, but many of the militaries around the world. There is a terrorist organization called the Spree, which really needs some explanation as to why they're called that, but that goes into the lack of world building that this series has. And yeah, they're, they're basically trying to hunt down this terrorist organization. So it's in some ways what you would expect from a show that's about a military organization going after a terrorist group except for their witches and there's magic. And there's this weird like Harry Potter element where we're actually at Fort Salem, which is where they're training the witches to be combat mages to go out to war. And it gets a little muddled there between the discipline that you would expect in a military environment 
and kind of your Harry Potter hijinks kind of stuff. But okay, I, I I'm not gonna you know score it too harshly on that. The big one of the biggest problems that I have with this is it it is apparently putting forth a very different vision of the United States in that the Puritans kind of lost, maybe? And so that very puritanical version of the United States didn't truly come into being, or maybe we're split in half, and so that there's some that have that view and others that don't or something. Mm, I don't know. But witchcraft is something that you're born with. The witch community is a fairly matriarchal affair, and in their desire to show off that we're now living under a matriarchy, they basically took all of the elements that you would expect a patriarchy, slapped it on top of a woman, and then said, ha ha, look, it's different. And yeah, that, that's where I have a big problem with this show. That, that's where most of my problems with this show come in. If we're going to be playing around with gender... Well, first of all, I, I think that we, we need to ask some questions because apparently men from witch families don't get powers or can because they can talk to animals, at least in one episode, but they're not witches. So, okay, <clears throat> that's a thing that needs explanation. But, okay, gender-based magic is a thing in some, thing, in some stories and it, it can work. But the fact that you are putting this out in 2020 and we don't have any, any recognition of what would happen if there were a trans witch or a non-binary witch, like, does being trans just mean you have no powers in this system? Does being non-binary make you not have powers in this system? That, that's something that I would really like to explore. But of course, at least so far this season, they're not at all. And one of our characters is, of course, of the three girls that we're following for the main storyline, one of them is a, I'm going to say lesbian, because we do have a reveal that one of the other characters is maybe bi. My husband and I actually got into a big argument about that, um, because... She apparently had a relationship with a guy when she was younger, but, you know, that could have just been her giving into the heteronormativity of the se of the setting. Blah, 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 blah. And we actually meet one gay dude. And that is, that, that that's problematic in its own rights. The, the biggest issue that I have with the show is its abject heteronormativity in that basically most of the female characters act like male characters. We see everything that you would expect in a hardened general put onto a female character. She's basically Patton with curves-ish and a higher voice. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you're exploring this entire alternate setting where you have this matriarchal society, it would be interesting, I, I would think, to figure out a way to show what feminine power would look like in that scenario without having her dress like a man, talk like a man, and act like a man. And yeah, yeah. That and the fact that basically there's an entire episode of the series where they get the male version of comfort women except for their volunteers who look forward to being brought on campus for the enjoyment of the lady folk. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Like my mind breaks on some of these concepts just because we don't have enough rooting in the setting to understand where this is actually coming from and exactly how this works, because you could say that this is like a girl's school and a boy's school getting together and having a dance, because that's kind of the context of the episode and the way the episode plays out. 
through its hyper-heteronormative <sighs> storyline. Except they are encouraged, though not required, to have sex with each other to gain more magical power so that they will be better at their combat magic because sex is power, power is violence, and violence is how we solve our problems. That is kind of like toxic masculinity boiled down into a little bucket. And there are things that you could do with that concept that could be interesting. And like I said, we have not finished the season and there it may grow beyond that. But <laughs> you just kind of sit there and almost feel like this is a power fantasy that has gotten weird, almost rapey connotations to it because the women are allowed to choose their men. The men kind of don't have a choice. There's a force that is brought up but never explained because the show does not stop to do world building at all called the real that will make sure that everybody pairs up the way that they should. So I mentioned pairing up and I do so because that's a big concept that they have in a couple particular episodes. And again, I'm trying not to be too spoilery until we actually get into the review, which I, I'll, I'll do when we finish the show. And we do see what appears to be a polyamorous. One of the characters kind of comes out as polyam in that she picks two dudes to do the nasty with because she does. <laughs> and I, I'm all right with that. You know, I, I have polyamorous tendencies myself, so I understand the idea that you can be attracted to more than one person. You can love more than one person. I get all that. I'm, I'm, I get it. But you then have this weird scenario where an obviously queer male is brought along for the uh, coupling festivities. And you could say that he was brought along because, you know, it would be rude to bring him to leave him alone because there's partying and drinking and all this other stuff. And they would just be ostracizing him if they didn't bring him. And of course, he tracks down the one lesbian because apparently there's only one lesbian or two. She may be bi. I don't know. Talk about her when we talk about the series because there are a lot of spoilers there. And they basically hang out and make fun of the other people who are very loudly having orgiastic sex around them, which was very tastefully shot. The, the show really... Does, it uses cursing to a certain degree, but you know, for as much sexiness as they could have TNA'd the show up to, they, they've been fairly restrained about that. So it, it's walking a fine line when it comes to sexuality in that it, it's being very uh, forthcoming with its discussion of sexuality, but at the same time, you know, it's not, being gratuitously sexy. But again, the boy and the girl hook up, even though at this point, the lesbian has a girlfriend in the story. And yes, there are reasons that they can't get together to do things because there are reasons that don't entirely make sense within the story, but okay, we'll take it because what would happen if they had used this magical night of orgy making that gives you power to have improved their powers? And, well, she doesn't partake in the orgy of power, and yet she gets powers anyway. Which I don't have a pro problem with if there was world building. If there was an explanation in here somewhere along the way, telling me, why is it that some people need to have the sex to have the power, and other people just get to have the power without having the sex? Or does her previous sex count as her doing the thing, but they made it very clear that it has to happen 
on this certain festival. So, yeah. The world building's a bit all over the place. And the gender roles are very, very set. Every character, at least at the beginning, has started off as a trope. We have the spoiled rich girl, we have the country girl who's all bright-eyed about the future, and we have the troubled girl who, I'm surprised, is not in self-harm, but at least they didn't go that far with her yet. Though, given the prevalence of suicide in this series, you know, I expect we'll probably get there at some point. But... And all the men that we meet are non-characters, are complete non-characters. Which again goes into the odd reverse heteronormativity of this series in that it treats the male characters in the way that most series treat female characters. They get very few lines. Those lines are generally about the women. And they're only really there to be sex objects and then discarded. And you can talk about how that's a fun play on things and a reversal, and it is, and I'm sure that there are some heterosexual people that are watching the show and their minds are being blown by this world where everything's topsy-turvy. In a very strictly heteronormative sort of way. And it's it's very bi-gendered. And that's, in some ways, one of the most frustrating things is well, okay, maybe it's too much to ask for a freeform show to actually have a trans or an NB character on it, but wouldn't there be a tomboy? This is the military, and tomboy is kind of a cliched female character. Would, would you not expect to see a tomboyish character in a show like this? No, we, we so far have not even gotten that character. And like I said before, I, I may be just a little too sensitive about all this because, you know, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about gender theory and the fact that I'm trying to actually craft a story that I want to see with a non-binary hero in it and all that. But, you know, if you're going to be doing a big gender play like this and introducing us to what matriarchal America would look like. I mean, for goodness sakes, we meet the president of the United States and she is a beautiful person of color and an actress that one of the few actresses in the series that I actually recognized from the things, but, and that's interesting. There, there's got to be some story there because it shows the difference that this America has in it. But without the world building and without them really escaping, not just the gender binary, but that very heteronormative understanding of gender, uh, I, I feel like they think they're getting out of it because they're going, but they're lady warriors. And okay, yes, they're lady warriors, but that, that doesn't, that, that, that isn't sufficient change. That isn't sufficient exploration into this. We, we have our girly girl scenes. We have our, oh, wow, you clean up pretty scene in here. It's, it's taking all the boxes that you would expect in any series that starred three, you know, high school, college age girls. And we've gotten all of those scenes and most of the tropes that you would expect to go along with them. So, I don't know. I This is the trap that I fall into with shows like this that have a very interesting premise, and I tend to want more from them than they are willing and or capable of providing. And maybe we'll get there. Like I said, we're only, I think, four or five episodes into the season. So, you know, it has time to turn itself around and get there. But, you know... I don't know. I just, I want more. That's kind of my big problem with all media lately is like, you've given me this tantalizing view of what would matriarchal America look like? Oh, wow. That's fascinating. I kind of want to see that. And, and then you don't give me matriarchal America. You give me patriarchal America, but with women in the men's roles and men in the women's roles. And 
Yeah. That that's not that's not thinking things through. It's not actually going for the promise of the premise. You're just gender flipping everything. And there's nothing wrong with a good gender flip narrative. I, I do enjoy those from time to time, and I am enjoying this show. <sighs> I just want more. I would love to know what you think. If you've been watching Motherland, Fort Salem, and you think I'm being way too hard on it, or if you saw something that I missed, please let me know. Down in the show notes, you will find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short, keep it clean so I can use it on the show. I would love to hear from you. If you have any que- if you can also use that for any questions, comments, or topics you would like to hear discussed on the show. You can also hit me up on social media. I'm C. Dorset on both Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, you can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. Alrighty. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this. I'm not going to be self-conscious. This is where I feel like I need to have that Stuart Smalley moment because I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. (laughs) That just showed my age, didn't it? Okay. If you have a dollar that you can pass my way, in the show notes you'll find a link to both listener support and my Patreon. Until the month of September, um, listener support will be waiving their fees, their transaction fees, so that more money comes to the creators. Thank you so much, Anchor, for doing that. If you have any money and you want to help out, that really would mean the world to me right now. We're, We're, like everybody else, in a pickle. But, and thank you to everybody who does that. It, you really do mean the world to me. If you don't have any money right now, or you don't feel like giving, that's perfectly all right. But if you know anybody you think would like anything that I do, please share it with them. That helps out more than you possibly know. So I'm going to be working on uh, podcasts and stuff today, because I've been telling you that I've got a whole bunch of new series that I'm wanting to do, and I'm wanting to get them recorded. So that's what I shall be doing. I hope you're finding something to keep yourself occupied as well. And until next time, stay well, stay safe, and don't forget to have the fun. Bye.